I got interested in birds when I was about eight years old. And when at school in England, at about 11 years old, I picked up a very large, colourful book. And it featured a major article about bowerbirds and birds of paradise. And I was intrigued, and that was it. I, I was hooked for life. Well, the bowerbirds for a very, very long time were considered to be probably the most intelligent birds in the world because of these extraordinary structures they build. Uh, we know a little better now that, you know, basically it, it's a, a complex set of instincts. Nevertheless, it's resulted in these amazingly artistic structures. These bowers and the decorations that they put on them, in fact, symbolise the quality of the individual males. Females can assess these things that are external to the bird. The bird can be absent, but the female can get a measure of the fitness of the male, even in his absence. And of course, once he's present, the male can then display to the female, show how vigorous he is, how fit he is, how lacking in parasites he is, perform complex courtship vocalizations that incorporate mimicry, because the females are selecting for them to do that. They want to see how old these birds are, because age equals survival, survival equals genetic fitness. Because the males are very promiscuous, and because the female, once she's fertilised by the male of her choice, and that's the crucial thing, she then has to build a nest, of course lay the egg, incubate the egg, and raise the young entirely alone and unaided. The male, in the meantime, is busy trying to attract other females. So she has to be extremely fussy, and that's why she will only choose a male that has a superb and very finely built and symmetrical bower. They must have lots of decorations, especially of very rare items that the females favour. They must be very vigorous. They must, of course, be at least seven years old because they don't become mature in colour until they're seven years old. They must perform very high quality vocal mimicry. All this is selected for by the females. They are incredibly fussy. What we know from many detailed studies is if you take a population, let's say, of 50 different adult male satins, it's quite possible that only one or two of them are performing over 90% of the matings in a breeding season.